Game Ranks presents another episode of Before You Buy, the show where we give you some straight up gameplay and some first impressions of the latest games releasing. This time around, we're talking about The Witcher 3 Blood and Wine expansion, CD Projekt Red's seemingly final expansion and story for The Witcher 3 saga. You access the new Blood and Wine game through a posting on a board, or you can load up an entirely new game save just for Blood and Wine. The game will automatically level you up to level 34 and basically give you the necessary stuff and points and attributes that you need. First First of all, I think it's worth noting that by now, The Witcher 3 is a well-oiled machine. There's been fixes, control tweaks, and updates to the HUD and user interface in small ways that really improve the quality of life play, and that is definitely apparent here, especially if you haven't hopped into The Witcher in a while. But I do recommend that you should because Hearts of Stone was just as awesome as well. But what you get with Blood and Wine is a completely new area and a whole new story to play through. You get roughly over 10 hours of the main quest, which really doesn't mean much because if you play The Witcher like most people play The Witcher, it's gonna take you much longer, especially since it puts you in this new land that's roughly a third of the size of the main Witcher map. I'd say roughly the size of No Man's Land, but way more densely packed. That with this land, the side quests, and the general dicking around, you should be able to squeeze approximately like 25 hours out of this game, no problem. That's including the main quest, and all the side quests and hunts and contracts that they give you. This new land of Toussaint is like a wacky fairy tale version of French countryside that can also feel a bit Mediterranean. What I love about it so much is that it's just so high fantasy, usually the stuff that The Witcher tries to stay away from. Here you have gallant knights, beautiful maids, creatures that need to be slayed, but it's all kind of tongue in cheek and Geralt is very aware of how corny and shitty everything is. Some of the knights are so boastful and overly heroic that it seems like they're compensating and they're really just full of faults like every Everyone else. Ultimately, The Witcher as a fantasy series has kind of been the anti-fantasy, so it's very interesting to see Geralt in the world of normal fantasy, but of course with that tongue-in-cheek CD Projekt Red spin on things. So in terms of actual stuff you get with this expansion, let me list it off. First of all, which was most exciting and the biggest surprise to me was that you get a home base. This vineyard that you can upgrade and add grindstone and armor benches, horse stables, store stuff, etc. You also get over 90 quests total, 40 points of interest, 30 new weapons, 20 new different monsters, types. The level cap is increased to 100. There's a new armor die mechanic where every piece of Witcher gear can have its color changed by using a die. Each piece of gear could actually be dyed separately. You can only get these dies in Toussaint, but you get them through various ways like picking them up through loot or buying them in a shop, and you can make them and craft them. You get a new Gwent deck, you get the updates to the user interface, and new mutation types that actually add completely different changes to your signs. Now your signs can get certain critical attacks where you can knock somebody down with an Ard push and they actually freeze and die instantly, or Igni can ignite someone and make them explode. The game gives you a lot of stuff, but deep down, Blood and Wine is a great title because it perfectly describes this expansion. It's goofy and fun, especially in some of the scenarios, you know, the colorful landscapes, and you know, some of the weird over-the-topness of the heroic knights. But then there's also that, like, dirty side of the Witcher, you know, the violence, the gore, the sex, the betrayal, all that stuff. And it even comes pretty perfectly together sometimes through some moments I won't really spoil, like getting drunk with a creature. It just has that special stuff to it. It, you know, it just has that special stuff that you want and especially can we talk about Toussaint? Oh my god It looks like a painting if you thought the environments of the Witcher 3 already looked amazing And now they're even crazier because the color palette is ratcheted up to 11 things are brighter and vibrant than ever But thankfully the Witcher still maintains some of those gothic elements You know the creepy spooky cave or the old abandoned castle There's plenty of that despite all the bright colorfulness uh, Longtime Witcher fans of the games and the books will be happy to finally meet a character that you've been hoping would show up. And speaking of the characters here, all of them are really great. I don't think a lot of them top the complexity of the Baron from the main game, but there is some good stuff here. Blood and Wine here does feel decidedly different from the vibe and tone and the different monsters you kill and the characters you meet. The gameplay, I will say, does feel very much similar, especially considering there are highs and lows, you know, there are some points where it drags on a bit, but ultimately you're getting a good tale here, especially since it feels a little bit like a bunch of different short stories combined into one cohesive narrative. It should be noted, I guess because it's my one single problem with this expansion, is that it is more of the same mechanically. Although there are some added criticals to the magic sign attacks, you know, and some of the dies and the vineyard that I talked about, you're still doing the same things here. You're looking through the Witcher sense, you're following trails, you're clicking on things, you're talking to people, and you're killing monsters. So if you were expecting something radically different, it seems like CD Projekt Red decided to experiment with the story and the environment, and less so with the gameplay. But if you're just wanting more Witcher 3, I can definitely recommend this. If you're a Witcher fan and you love the Witcher 3, for 20 bucks in the United States, this expansion 
is a hell of a good time and more than worth it. I know some of you may not want to hear that, you know, me just praise a game because, you know, The Witcher 3 is definitely not perfect. The horse, stupid roach still gets stuck on geometry. I encountered one glitch, thankfully just one, but that stuff has to be noted, you know? But speaking of noting things, I do want to know what you guys think of The Witcher 3 Blood and Wine down in the comments because there is a lot to discuss here story-wise. There's a lot to unpack, surprising amount for an expansion, which, you know, we don't usually get big expansions like this anymore, so, you know, props to that. I want to know what you think of this. I want to know if you felt like the season pass for The Witcher 3 was worth it. And if you didn't pick this up, I do want to know if you feel like you're gonna or if you're gonna pass. Because the story here does come to a conclusion and I definitely think it's worth seeing through. But I want to know what you guys think. If you want to talk about Blood and Wine or any other video games, come hang out with me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, that stuff, at Jake Baldino. But you guys know the deal. Clicking the like button helps us out and lets us do more and more before you buy videos. We know you like them. We like them too. So we want to do more. If this is your first time here though, you should know that subscribe is a good idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Your grace, my contract. I'd like to discuss it. Naturally, but not here. We shall need Damien. He let the investigation pending your arrival. But whatever could he be? Come, we must find him.